Next, we're going to talk about so-called split brain studies. What happens when one hemisphere of the brain is disconnected from the other half? This research began in the 1960s, conducted by Roger Sperry, who worked with cats and basically trained cats in a go-no-go -no -go procedure. For instance, responding by pushing a pedal when the light's on and don't bother pressing it when the light's off because you won't get food if the light's off. You do get food when the light is on. That is a go-no-go -go procedure. He was interested in how information about a task like that would be transferred from one hemisphere to the other. So here I'm showing you a diagram of a cat, basically the connections between the eyes and the brain. You can see that I've drawn eyeballs that are blue and I've drawn the connections from the eyeballs to the left hemisphere and right hemisphere. The left eye, for instance, goes straight back to the left hemisphere, the optic nerve, but it also goes over directly to the right hemisphere. Likewise, the right eye has connections to the left hemisphere, but also directly back to the right hemisphere. This involves two vocabulary terms, contralateral and ipsilateral. So you're already familiar with the idea that contralateral connections are across the body, and now you can learn that ipsilateral connections are those that are on the same side. So contralateral connections between the eye and the brain, left eye to the right hemisphere, right eye to the left hemisphere. Ipsilateral connections, left eye straight back to the left hemisphere, and right eye straight back to the right hemisphere. Now that point of crossover for those contralateral connections is called the optic chiasma. And Roger Sperry had to cut the optic chiasma in cats in order to control which hemisphere received information from which eye. So here you have a cat who's wearing an eye patch over the right eye. The optic chiasma has been cut. The animal is trained in a go-no-go -go procedure so that only the left eye is involved in that process. So the left eye is sending information straight back ipsilaterally to the left hemisphere, but not over to the right hemisphere anymore. So once the animal is 100% correct on this go-no-go -no -go procedure, he took the patch off the right eye and placed it on the left eye. Now the right eye has never seen the light or anything about this go-no-go -no -go procedure. Is the animal going to still be able to do it at 100% accuracy? The answer is yes, because the left hemisphere can communicate to the right hemisphere. Although the left eye is the only eye that saw the task, and it was communicating only to the left hemisphere, the left hemisphere is communicating to the right hemisphere, and so the animal is still 100% correct performing this task with the different eye. Now, Roger Sperry cut the connection between the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. This is a white band of tissue called the corpus callosum, a very important vocabulary term, corpus callosum. It connects the two hemispheres of the brain. So now the situation is different. Patches on the right eye, the animal's learning the go-no-go -no -go procedure using the left eye. That information travels back to the left hemisphere, but it's no longer communicated to the right hemisphere. Now when you take the patch off and you put it on the left eye, the animal is not going to be able to perform this task at 100% correct. In fact, under these circumstances, you could teach the left hemisphere the go-no-go -no -go procedure where you respond if the light's on but not if the light's off, and you could train the right hemisphere to do exactly the opposite. Go when the light's off, but do not respond when the light is on. So this is how Roger Sperry's so-called split brain studies were initially conducted. What about humans? What happens when the corpus callosum is cut or the left hemisphere is disconnected from the right hemisphere in humans? You cannot, for research purposes, cut the corpus callosum of a human. It would be unethical and illegal. However, Roger Sperry and ultimately his colleague Gazaniga were able to locate people who had the corpus callosum cut for medical reasons. For instance, in severe epilepsy, what happens is that there's uncontrolled neural firing in some part of the brain, and it could spread and spread, and sometimes even cross over the corpus callosum to the other hemisphere, making seizures even more serious. So for medical purposes, some people have had the corpus callosum cut. When other forms of therapy don't work, then at least 
The uncontrolled neural firing is confined to one hemisphere of the brain. If the corpus callosum is cut, the individual still is quite able to function in daily life. There are no obvious behaviors that are different compared to before the surgery. There are some anecdotes about individuals who wake up in the morning and they go to the closet to get an outfit. The right hand reaches out for one outfit. The left hand reaches out for a different outfit and for a moment there's indecision because the right hemisphere wants to wear one outfit while the left hemisphere wants a different one. But usually there is no obvious difference in behavior before and after these surgeries. Sperry faced another problem and that is that you cannot cut the optic chiasma in the visual system of a human for research purposes. Again, illegal and unethical. So what he did was take advantage of the organization of the human visual system and it was so elegant how he did this. You're again looking at a brain and this time it's from the top and this time the eyes are drawn in the correct location. They're actually right under the frontal cortex. You're seeing in red and blue the connections between the eyes and the visual cortex of the occipital lobe at the back of the brain. You can also see the visual field in front of this person where they're looking. You've got the left visual field shown in red letters and the right visual field shown in blue letters. And between them I've drawn a black dot called a fixation point. So during testing, this individual will be staring straight ahead at that fixation point. And images can be presented to the right or the left in a controlled fashion because they're presented very briefly before the eyes have a chance to move. As you see here, images presented in the far left visual field, follow that red arrow, are projected onto the right retina of the eyes and that information travels back to the right hemisphere information that's presented in the far right visual field as this person stares ahead at the fixation point is projected onto the left retina and that information goes straight back to the left hemisphere. So in this fashion Sperry could control which hemisphere received information. Instead of cutting the optic chiasma you either present information briefly to the far left visual field or the far right visual field. And again, for these individuals, the corpus callosum, that white band of tissue connecting the two hemispheres was cut for medical reasons. So now Sperry could control which hemisphere received information. If he presented an image in the far left visual field, it went to the right hemisphere only, not to the left. If information was presented in the far right visual field, it went to the left hemisphere only and not to the right. So imagine that in the far left visual field, this little image is projected. This little man with a big nose and antennae sticking out of his head. It is presented very briefly in the left visual field for this so-called split brain patient. Then the individual is asked what they saw. Are they going to be able to answer that question? No. The answer is no because information went to the right hemisphere and presuming this person is right-handed, the speech centers are in the left hemisphere so they'll not be able to say, I saw a little man with a big nose and antennae. Again, only the right hemisphere received the information, but the left hemisphere has the speech centers for this right-handed split brain patient. So the individual would not be able to say what the image was. However, the individual would be able to communicate about this little man with a big nose in another fashion. If you show the person a series of photographs, one of which is this little man with a big nose, then they should be able to point to the image of the little man. But think about it, which hand can do this? If the image is shown so that only the right hemisphere knows about it, obviously they cannot say what they saw. Speech centers are in the left hemisphere, not the right. But the individual would be able to point to a picture of the little man. The right hemisphere knows this information. Which hand does the right hemisphere control? It's contralateral. So the left hand could point to an image of the little man, but the right hand could not. You'll need to be able to answer a question about split brain patients. But I'm going to make it easier on you because I'm going to word any question on a quiz or the final exam beginning with which hemisphere knows that information. I'm not going to ask you to memorize how the visual field is organized. So you'll get a question, probably, 
saying that the right hemisphere knows something, how can that person communicate about it, presuming it is a right-handed individual? So you need to know where are the speech centers, they're in the left hemisphere, and which hand is controlled by which hemisphere. And again, it's contralateral control, right hemisphere controls left hand, left hemisphere controls right hand, and you should be able to do that.